<clears throat> Sabbath peace. Y'all quiet in here. Another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. <clears throat> All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints in the chat, and the saints, saints scattered all the way around the world that we don't even know about. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's see. Last week, we talked about what? What did we talk about last week? We were in what? Matthew 18? No, we were. Wait. And we went beyond Matthew. Oh, no, yeah, that was the week before. We was in uh, John 7. Right. Look at you acting like you know what you're talking about, boy. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yeah, we was in John chapter 7. In John 7, what did we talk about in John 7? Remember Yahushua, he was, you know what I'm saying? He came down to the feast. It was the Feast of Tabernacles, which is in a couple weeks, right? You know what I'm saying? He came down to the Feast of Tabernacles, yeah. He came, mm -hmm. he came down to the Feast of Tabernacles, and then in the Feast of Tabernacles, our, our right before the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, he was talking to his brother. Remember, his brothers was like, man, why don't you go down and tell everybody you the man? Since you so, you know what I'm saying? Since you the man, why don't you go down and tell everybody you the man? He is looking like, nah, man, it ain't my time yet. It's always y'all time. No, go ahead and go. All right, so they went ahead, but he stayed back. And after they went, he snuck on down there. And when he got down there, he started teaching the people. You remember when he was teaching the people, the people were looking like, how in the world do this man know the scriptures like this? And he ain't never learned from nobody. You know what I'm saying? He ain't even went to seminary school yet. You know what I'm saying? How you, how you handling the word like this? Right? And he had to tell him, man, it's like, listen, man, you obey my word. I mean, I'm saying, well, he said, you obey the will of the Father, you'll, you'll understand where my words come from, whether it's true or not, right? Whether it's the will of God or not, right? Then we read a little bit from uh, from uh, Psalm 119, and we talked about how keeping the commandments actually teaches us, right? It gives us understanding, and it'll make us more more wise than our teachers, right? The people that, that, that would seek to teach us, you know what I'm saying, make us more wise than they are, Right? And after that, we kind of looked at how he started to have discourse and the officers, you know what I'm saying, from the Pharisees was watching them. They were supposed to be down there to gaffle them up, but they didn't even put their hands on them. They were looking at them and they kind of was listening to him like, nah, this man kind of sound legit. So they took it back to the Pharisees. You remember the Pharisee, one of the Pharisees, he was looking like, what y'all fell for his stuff too? That's crazy. Then he looked at him. He was like, did you see any of us believing on him? Then Nicodemus was like, well, you know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, Nicodemus, you fell for it too? And he started getting that Nicodemus because we remember we talked about how Nicodemus, he went to him at night. You know what I'm saying? He went to Yahushua. He was like, listen, master, now we know that you're from God and everything. But uh, and Yahushua started talking to him. That's where, where we kind of left off, where, where the Pharisees are after him, right? The elders, the leaders of our people are kind of after him because he's kind of starting to the uproar. They don't believe that he the Messiah people starting to believe that he Messiah. And then our people in whole is like kind of split. Like some of them is like, this guy's pretty remarkable. Maybe he's who he say he is. You know what I'm saying? And then others are looking at him like, mm, no, nah, I think he got a devil. He'd be saying some crazy stuff. So we're going to continue to see that same theme, right? That same theme kind of played back and forth in our reading today. So we're going to pick up, we're going to do John chapter eight, verse one. This is John chapter eight, starting at verse one. And remember, since he came down for the feast, he's still in Jerusalem, right? So this is John chapter 8, verse 1. He's still in Jerusalem. Uh, <coughs> all right. Water. Uh, my bad. One second. It's like they sprinkle a little, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of that on it. You know what I'm talking about? A little bit of that. 
Mm-hmm. But you got, you're on your phone, so you know what I'm saying? You might as well just say it to your phone, like, hey, phone, turn there for me. You know what I'm saying? A real one, you know what I'm saying? A real one turn like this. You know what I mean? A real one like this. Look, sister, then, yeah. She turning with her pinky eyes closed. Wow, wow, wow. You know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know nothing about that, though. You know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't know that. You over there. Okay, Google, please go to John chapter 7, verse 13. What was it? Verse 14 or 13? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? A real one? Hit it like, yeah, 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 yeah. Where we at? Yeah, hit it with the finger. Bow. I know exactly where we at. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, but everybody different, though. Everybody, I ain't just, no, everybody different. You know what I'm saying? Everybody different. You know what I'm saying? Some people built like that. This is uh, John chapter 8, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Yahshua went unto the Mount of Olives. Yeah, I can still, I can hear myself on your, on your screen. It's cracking. It's like an echo. Let me see. Try turning your speaker down a little bit. All right. And Yahshua went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and talked it. <clears throat> Maybe that's it. Try it now. And every like, and Yahshua went into the Mount of Olives, <coughs> and early in the morning came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Right? So they said, We found a woman. She was taken in adultery. And the books say, in the very act. That means they caught her doing the do, right? They grabbed her up, brought her back, and they say, look, master, you the Messiah, right? You the guy. You a lawful man. We caught this lady in the very act. Why do you think they bringing him in this situation? To trap him. They trying to set him up. She married, right? She married sleeping with somebody she ain't got nobody sleeping, no business sleeping with. But why do you think they didn't handle that situation the way our law tell her and they brought it to Yahushua? What was that, Brother T? Trying to set him up. It was a trap, right? They trying to set him up. Because if you think about what we've read so far, Yahushua's stance every time that they try to condemn somebody is to kind of let them off, right? Remember, when it came to the blind man that's carrying the mat. All right, he wasn't blind, sorry. The man that was carrying the mat. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was paralyzed. And he was carrying the mat because the Most High God healed him through Yahushua. Yahushua then ran into him and he is like, look, don't tell nobody that I did this. The dude carrying the mat went and they say, why are you carrying the mat on the Sabbath? And he said, look, the old guy, you know what I'm saying? The one that healed me, he told me to do it. Then they start coming out to Yahushua and Yahushua was like, what's the big deal? Right? What's the big deal? Then you got, uh, you remember his uh, disciples. They was eating. They was picking, picking uh, you know what I'm saying, the corn off of the uh, plants when they was walking through. And then the Pharisees accused them of sin. They was looking like, why y'all, why y'all, why y'all picking these things off on the Sabbath? That's a sin. Yahushua was like, no, 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 that's not. What's the big deal? So every time Yahushua, from in their perspective, it's like, man, he always be trying to get people off. So I got one for him now. He looking like we caught her in a very act. We know the law says she's supposed to get stoned. In their mind, that's what they thinking. So they bring them to Yahushua, right? And so then, watch what happened. Watch what Yahushua did. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Right? So Moses in the law commanded us that somebody like this should be stoned. But tell, tell us what you think, Yahushua. Watch this. This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Yahushua stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Right? So Yahushua, he stooped down. They talking to him like, yeah, we caught her in a very act. Yahushua, look at him. 
just start writing on the ground. He said he, he bent down and started just writing on the ground. Now, the book don't tell us what he writing, but he just writing on the ground. So, you know, I like to imagine a couple, a couple things. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, one thing he could possibly be writing, like, he could just be writing the law. You know what I'm saying? Like this. You know what I'm saying? It's that another. The another thing he could be, he could be writing everybody's name and next to their name, writing the sin that he know they doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, yep, you, yeah. Oh, okay. Jonathan, okay, you know, I got you. Because you was over there, you know what I'm saying, stealing out of uh, old Josie house. You know what I'm saying? And then, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? So he probably writing all they sin. But who knows what he was writing? Whatever he was writing, he was writing it pretending like he didn't even hear them. He wasn't giving them no mind as they talking to him. Like, yeah, what should we do with old girl? We caught her in a very out. Books say we should stone her. What do you say? He just writing, kept writing. Watch what he do. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that, would, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone at her. So then after that, he is looking like, okay, I'll tell you what. You say the book's your stoner, huh? Okay, let's start it off with the person that ain't got no sin. Who would be the only person that qualified for that in this circle? Yahushua. Yahushua. Right? Yahushua would be the only one that could be like, let me get the stone to start it off. So the first thing he put in front of it is like, okay, who, who should start this off? Let's start it off with the person that has zero sins. Right? Let's see what they say. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convinced by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even into the last. Right? So now this is why I feel like he, he might have been like writing down their sins on them. Because you know, y'all sure a bad boy. You know what I'm saying? He ain't no like, yo, she'll get down there. He started writing on the ground. Hey, looking at her. Like, she committed adultery. We should stone her right now. He just kept writing. And then after that, they looking like, so what you want to do? He get up. He's like, uh, all right. Whoever ain't got no sin, let's, let's kick it off. Everybody looking around. But then he kept writing. He bent back down and started writing again. Then after that, everybody just started walking away. So I feel like he wrote something like he putting their business out there. Like, uh-huh. You know who this sentence is about. You know what I'm saying? And this one, you know who this So everybody looking like, man, nah, I ain't even interested in this no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, this ain't even fun no more. I'm going home. You know what I'm saying? And then after that, everybody end up walking away. Watch this. Y'all sure was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst. And when y'all sure had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, no man, Lord. Right? And he her. said, woman, where are your accusers? All these people that were surrounded here trying to see what was going on, what happened to them? Has nobody condemned you? And the woman looking at her like, ain't nobody. Ain't, no, you know, ain't nobody here now. Now, she just got caught in adultery now. She ain't, she's still a sinner. You know what I'm saying? But she just got, but she looking like, ain't nobody here now. So watch what y'all sure do. She said, no man, Lord. And Yahshua said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Go and what? Sin no more. Go and do your best. Sin no more. <coughs> go and just follow your heart. He said, go and sin no more. He didn't give her no pass. Right? A lot of people look at this and be like, see, God is about mercy and forgiveness. He is. But he also about the law. You can't have the, you know what I'm saying? You can't get mercy and forgiveness outside with the law judge, right? But the problem is people just don't know the law. What's really supposed to happen in this situation? Man. How should this situation have been handled? What do you guys, guy? You think she should be punished? Yeah. You a Pharisee, boy. You a Pharisee too. <laughs> <laughs> no, so look, if you look at the law, watch this. This is, uh, grab Deuteronomy, uh, what is it, 22? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 22. What you, okay, Google, uh, please turn to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22 for me. What? Oh, my goodness gracious. He harsh, boy. He boy, he boy don't got no. Yeah, he boy ain't got no darn. He boy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. Everything come back to the law, right? 
And the problem is that we get so used to judging beyond what the book says that we start to make judges, judgment. Like we all know adultery is wrong, right? We all know that. So when the man come up and say, I caught her in the very act, right? I caught her in the very act of adultery. All of us say, well, adultery is wrong. She should be a punish for it. Ain't no other way around that, right? Adultery is wrong. Therefore, she should be punished for it, right? That's a simple idea. However, there is a law that we have to follow. And the law is very particular, right? So let's see what this law says. It's Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 22. Make sure Google got it right now. All right. If a man mm -hmm. be found lying with a woman married to a husband. If a man be what? Found lying with a woman married to a husband. And now they just said they caught her in the very act, right? So if they caught her in the very act, what must they have seen? Then. They must have seen her and they must have seen another man, right? So they say if a man be caught, right, lying, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, read it. If a man be found lying with a woman married to a husband, that... They both then wait, husband, then they shall both of them die. Both the men They shall what? Both of them die. Both the Keep men going. that lay with the woman and the woman, so shall thou put away evil from Israel. So oh. now who did they bring to Yahushua? They brought the woman and they didn't bring the man. So that's the first thing. They were supposed to bring them both. So since they didn't bring them both, Yahushua already got an out. Right? That's not according to our law. Our law would say, you got to get both. Why didn't you get the man? But Yahushua didn't even attack that point. He just let it be. So then he started writing on the ground, doing all this. Right? Because our law has something else. Right? Every matter has to be established by two or three witnesses. So when he started writing on the ground, he said, listen, let's kick it off then. Y'all saw it, right? Go ahead, stoner. But whoever ain't got no sin, that's who should start. Now, they decided to walk off for whatever reason. Whatever he is writing on the ground, they looked at that and they're looking like, man, I'm about to take my butt home. I ain't playing with this man. You know what I'm saying? So then they left. Then when there was nobody there, he asked the question. He said, where are your accusers? Because according to our law, if she, if there are no accusers, or at least if there is not at least two accusers, then guess what? Ain't no charge. If it ain't two people accusing them, right? Before our law, there is no charge. Right? There is nothing that we can charge you with. So at this point, he look at her and he say, well, neither do I condemn you. Because could he condemn her? He didn't see it. He wasn't there. He wasn't a witness of it. So he couldn't condemn her either. So he said, neither can I condemn you. But I know what your butt did now. It's in no more. It's a little nasty butt back in your house. You know what I'm saying? It's in no more now. Right? But I can't condemn you. Right? Whoa. If we know our law then we'll see that this was actually righteous judgment. This wasn't a situation where she deserved to be stoned according to our law, but Yahushua superseded the law and said, no, don't stone her. No, nah, that's that Christian stuff. You can't supersede no darn law. Whatever the law say, that go. Yahushua got to obey the law too, right? But when you know it, right, when it makes sense to you and you know it, now you can separate the two things and you can see what he really did. And then it teaches us something, right? Even in judgment, even when we think we're doing the right thing, it's important for us to go back, look at exactly what's said, exactly what's expected of us, right? And then defer on the side of mercy. If something is un unclear, then you should defer on the side of mercy. The only time you should be using the judgment is when it's according to the book. If it's not according to the book, then you should, you'll never see me see somebody smoking a cigarette and be like, man, you going to hell for smoking that cigarette. Why would I say that? 
I ain't got not one lick of book that tell me, okay, well, you know what? You at that slot machine, you know what I'm saying? Since you gambling, you going to hell. Since you got a tattoo on you, you going to hell. All that stuff is, that's, that's weird. That's not what the book, you never going to find the book. They try to stretch the book with the tattoo. They say, because the book tell you, it say, it say uh, if you get a, uh, um, if you mark your body for the dead, right? It do say that's a sin. So if, now if I get a tattoo of my dead homie, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I get a tattoo of my dead homie, up, now that's, that's different. That's a sin. I got booked for that, right? I just go get, you know what I'm saying? What y'all be getting? The girl look, getting like little butterflies and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Getting a little, you know what I'm saying? What you got on your foot? What you got a little, the little chain or whatever? You know what I'm saying? The girl be getting like the little thing. They be always be getting the little matching tattoo, little stupid tattoos they be getting. Now, listen, I don't like it. I don't approve of it. I'm going to tell you, oh, why would you? I'm going to make a big deal of it. But now that's me. That ain't God. And that's important to make that separation. When I yeah, feel man. something, I got to put that on me. I can't manipulate people and make people feel yeah. away just because, just because I don't want them to do it and try to make them believe God don't want them to do it. That's when you overstep. And that's when you get into the same position that a lot of these Christians is in, a lot of these Muslims, a lot of these other people, they overstep because they start to present themselves as if they presenting something on behalf of God. And God is saying, I've never said that. We got to let God judge the stuff that, that we don't really know about. I don't know if he like tattoos or not. I don't know if he like people gambling or not. I don't know if he like when people smoke cigarettes or not. That ain't none of my business, though, because he hasn't told me. When he come and tell me, look, when he get up and be like, yo, Slim. Because in my mind, he called me Slim. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> slim. When, when the next time you get to preaching, tell them they can't smoke cigarettes. Let me tell you what I'm going to jump in here. I'm be like, yes, finally, I've been trying to tell you people, ain't no smoking. You know how loud I'm going to be when that happens? But until that happens, that ain't none of my business when it comes to God. When I'm talking about the word of God, that's none of my business. Me personally, I'm going to be like, man, why are you smoking darn cigarette? What's wrong with you? Right? But when it comes to the word of God, that's none of my darn business. Right? If it's a sin, we got a sin. We know what the sins are. The heart. Give me three sins. Where are you at? He left? Oh, I know. Give me three right now. Go. Lying. What? Uh, what? What's the second one? Cussing, okay. Murdering. Murdering, okay, that's three. Zahar, give me three. Oh, he ate the good ones from you. Look at you. You thinking? Oh, go ahead. Call Google. Call her. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Siri. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Alexa. Uh, adultery. You stole that from him. That's all right. I'll give it to you. Half a point. What else? We got adultery. Sex before marriage. That's a good one. What else? Come on. What, you tagging in a friend? Oh, of course. Nope. Nope. Oh, <laughs> Wait. What's downstairs? Who that downstairs? Uh, <laughs> you ain't got one more for me? Hurry up. Oh, hey, covetousness. 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 Look, you need all time. Everybody help. You only got one on your own. And it was, yeah. No, right? Oh. But so we know the sins, right? The sins are very clear. <laughs> We can read about the sins in Mark chapter 7. We can read about the sins in Galatians chapter 5. We can read about the sins in Ephesians chapter 5. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, six right? Yeah. In Revelation chapter 22. We can read about the sins. These are specific sins, and they tell you these are the things that you have to turn away from or else you will not enter into the kingdom. All the rest of this stuff, when it comes to anything else that's not listening in places, these people lying and trying to manipulate you, Right? Cause these Christians, you know how these Christians to do. They make you feel like everything is sin until you come to them. If you come, look, it's for a Christian, it's all about how you come to them. You know what I'm saying? You know how they say, come as you are. So now listen, if you come to a Christian, you, you know what I'm saying? You got a mini skirt on, you know what I'm saying? Tattoos all over your body. And you come to a Christian, you be like, I just, I just feel so broken. I've been through so much. I just need God. They're going to be like, Oh, baby, God don't care about none of that stuff, baby. Don't you know God is a forgiving God? Let me tell you something, baby. You come to him like that, it's okay. Same girl, same outfit, right? Walk by and just be like, mm, I know God loves me. <laughs> this, that, another. Chris going to be like, uh-uh, girl. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm going to tell you something. <coughs> 
Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to manipulate you. They want you to be broken and, and come to them and need them. It ain't, it ain't about God. So the goalposts move. When you know the word, you ain't got to move the goalposts. Whether the little girl come, come to me crying or she walking past, I'm going to tell her the same darn thing. You need to take them darn clothes off and change. Especially when you come into the man of God. It don't, it don't change anything. And I'm going to say that and tell you exactly what you need to do to be saved. Right? It's not confusing. Because if you're that little girl and you're broken and you're looking for God and somebody tells you it don't matter. And then you see that same person who told you it don't matter. Judge the next person. And you remember like, but I used to be that girl. And they judge her. Now you're confused. And this is what happens daily with our people because we got poor leadership, right? So Yahushua, whether it's right or wrong in terms of the person and what they did, he's going to judge righteously. And that's exactly what he did in this situation. Let's go back. This is uh, uh, John chapter eight. Where are we at? Probably nine. Verse what? 11. This is John chapter eight, verse 11. Watch the book say. And she said, No, man, Lord. And Yahushua said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Then spake Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Mm -hmm. Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I right? So they came to him. And what they said was pretty much right. They're looking at like, hey, no, hold on. Every matter got to be established by two or three witnesses. They're saying you bear record of yourself. In other words, you the only one saying this stuff about yourself. How are we supposed to believe you if you the only one saying it? Right? So they saying, look, you bear record of yourself. Your testimony ain't true. We not rolling with you. You need more. Basically they're saying, we don't believe you. We need more evidence. Right. But they weren't around before. Remember, Yahushua already addressed this in John chapter five. Remember, he was saying. He said, if I bear record of myself, then my testimony is not true. He said that already. Right. And then he came back. He said, but there's somebody else that bears record of me. And he said, John the Baptist. But he said, you know what? I don't even need testimony from men. Because God himself bears record of me through these miracles. Right. And then after that, he said, and then also, if you search the scripture, you will see that it's testifying of me. So he has his three witnesses himself, John the Baptist and the scripture and the uh, four, really, because and and the father testify of them are uh, the witnesses. I mean, uh, through the uh, miracles. Right. So you look at it and he's covered. However, they weren't around for that conversation. So they come to him and be like. Man, you're the only one saying this stuff about yourself. You calling yourself, you know what I'm saying, the light of the world. And if we follow you, we won't be in darkness. Like, what you saying can't be true because you're the only one saying it. Who else going to say it? Prove it to us. We don't believe you. We need more people. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whether I go. But ye cannot tell whence I come and whether I go. Ye judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I have the Father that sent me, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me bears witness of me. Right? So he's saying, look, the law say you're right. I need two witnesses. But I'm one. I bear witness of myself. And then on top of that, the Father bears witness of me. But watch this. Then said they unto them... Where is thy father? And Yahshua answered, you, ne you neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. These words spake Yahshua in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Remember, yeah. last week we were talking about it and how they was all waiting to lay hands on him. They were waiting to gaffle him up. So he's still out here. He's teaching. He's talking to the people, and they still haven't gaffled him up. And the book is telling you, well, it didn't happen that way because it wasn't his time yet. Keep going. Watch this. The phone down. Then said Yahshua again unto them, I go my way and ye shall seek me. 
and ye shall die in your sins. Whether I go, ye cannot come. Right? So remember, he told us this last week, too. He told the people, he was like, man, I'm going somewhere where y'all can't go. And you remember, they were speculating. They were sitting there. It's like, where are you going? He going to the Gentiles? Because when he said, you know, naturally, if somebody say, I'm going somewhere you can't go, what you going to be thinking is, oh, what you, you about to go in that gated community? You know what I'm saying? You about to go in that one, the one that the security guard be in front of. You can't get in there unless you got, you know what I'm saying? Like, where you going? So that's why they thinking about him. They looking like, oh, you about to go somewhere we can't go. Where you going to the Gentiles? You want to want that one Gentile city where they don't like Hebrews? Oh, no, I ain't going over there. If he going over there, I ain't going over there. That's how they thinking about it. So now he coming back and he's saying it again. He looking like, man, I'm about to go somewhere and y'all not going to be able to follow me where I go. Watch this. He talking about going to sit at the right hand of the father. Right. In their mind, they think he's talking about something physical. <coughs> go ahead. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? Y'all, Shua said unto them, Wait, sorry. Hold on, hold on. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Then they said unto him, Who art thou? And y'all, Shua said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from it from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Yahshua unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Yahshua to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And if ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be able right? to. So he said, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciple indeed, right? And then if you continue in the truth, right, then the truth will set you free. So it's two things here that we have to kind of latch on to. When he's talking to the people, he's talking to them very cl clearly. He's telling you how to become a disciple. A few, several weeks ago, we talked about this. We talked about the difference between the mere followers of the Messiah, the multitudes, and the disciples, right? And if y'all remember when we talked about the mere followers, the people, the multitudes that just followed them, remember he spoke to them only in parables. The books say he never spoke to them any other way. Only in parables did he speak to them. So he goes on and he starts talking about all these parables and the parables are riddles. It's difficult to understand. You got to kind of put this puzzle together. And so the people are looking like, I don't get it. I don't really know what he means. And so sometimes the disciples, which are different from the people that just follow them, the disciples came back and they was looking like, what did you mean by that peril? parable? And they thoroughly, he thoroughly under, uh, thoroughly explained it to them so that they understood it. Right. And so that's the difference between uh, or in terms of benefit. That's the difference between the, the mere follower of the Messiah versus the disciple of the Messiah. So now he's telling you how to be a disciple in the Messiah. He says, if you continue in my word, then you will be my disciple indeed. Remember that he never, not once throughout anything that we have read or anything that we're going to read, does he give you what you need to do to become a Christian? It just doesn't exist. He never going to tell you if you do X, Y, and Z, that's how you become a Christian. He never going to tell you Christians must all do this. Right? That's a anybody who talks to you like that, it's a made up concept. They, there's literally no requirements to be a Christian. Anybody can be whatever kind of Christian they want to be. That's why the, the that's why the Christian couldn't get mad at Kanye West. When Kanye West started doing this stuff and making a fool out of this stuff, making a fool out of their stuff and their religion, they couldn't get mad at him cuz it's like what you, what you going to point to and say you can't be a Christian? It doesn't exist. 
But now when it comes to disciple, now you can say, okay, you can't be a disciple because you didn't continue in this word. Or you could say, okay, I know I am a disciple because I have continued in this word. Right? There's a standard amongst being a disciple. And he's telling you that. And then once you are a disciple, then you know the truth. And then the truth sets you free. It makes you free from death. You live forever as disciples. Right? When we die, we resurrected. Right? Keep going. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. We were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free. Right? So they looking like, what you talking about, boy? We ain't never been in no darn bondage. What you mean? We, you know what I'm saying? We seize an Abraham. They don't even know their own history with. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, y'all butts were just in bondage. Not a, not even 400 years ago. Yeah, right? But the way they looking at it is like, man, we've been free for a long time. They riding high. They looking like, man, we Hebrews. We Abraham seed. We ain't never been in bondage. Who you talking to? Right? Who you think you talking to? Talking about some bondage setting free. We good. All right, watch this. Keep going. Y'all shall answer them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. The right? Servant of That's big. You have to understand that. He said, look, verily, verily, I say unto you. When he say verily, verily, you got to pay attention. He said, he said, verily, verily, another word, another way of saying verily, verily is like saying for real, for real. You know what I'm saying? So he's saying for real, for real. Let me say, tell you something. Whoever commits sin is what? A servant of sin. You end up being a slave to sin by committing sin. Right? It don't feel that way to us because that's the deception of it. Right? But ask, ask the average Christian or just the average person. Just ask them like, hey. Do you think you can stop doing all sins or you can stop doing all wrong? And guess what they're going to say? Nah, that's impossible. Nobody's perfect. You know why they feel it's impossible? Because they're in bondage to it. They don't have, in their mind, they think they've been, in their mind, we the ones that shackle. Right? Oh, y'all religious people, man. Y'all shackle. Man, y'all not able to do nothing. Y'all got to restrict yourself in, in everything. Well, there's a difference. If I restrict myself, that's freedom. Right? If I look at myself and I say, hmm, I have an option. I can do X or I can do Y or I can do Z. Right? It's freedom for me to make that choice and say, I want to do one of these. Right? You know which one is not freedom? To say, I can't stop doing one. Now you're in bondage. And that's where we find ourselves when it comes to sin. We in our mind, we've been convinced that it's freedom. We think we think, oh yeah, I'm gonna keep doing this and I'm gonna keep doing that and I'm gonna keep doing that. And because that's what I want to do. And in many of these sins, after you get done doing it, and you in a room by yourself, and ain't nobody there, and you lay your head on your pillow, you acknowledge that you didn't want to do it. You acknowledge that you regret it, that it felt bad, that you feel wrong, that you feel guilty, that you don't like the way it turned out. I remember, I remember I used to drink, right? And I'll go, and you know what I'm saying, only when we went to parties, you know what I'm saying, you get a party. So you'd be like, ah, and I didn't, I didn't even like drinking, right? But it was the only way I could get myself through the night and have fun at the party. So I drink, ah, 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 ah. and I'm having fun during the night. The night is, ah, oh, rock spring, oh, whoa, having a great time, right? Then at the end of that night, I lay down, I go, oh, that was a night, what a night. I wake up in the morning, and my head hurts. And I'm sleepy. Oh, yeah, and I got to go to work. And guess what happened when I get there? Dang it, why did I have to do that? It wasn't even worth it. We got into the fight with them boys over there. Them boys started shooting at us. You know what I'm saying? This dude tried to rob us. This stuff that happened. I didn't even get the girl that I was trying to get with. You know what I'm saying? And then you look at it and you say, oh, what? Now I'm sleepy at work, about to get written up again. And it's like, why did I do that? It wasn't even worth it, right? But then you have to do it again. And then you have to do it again. And that's when you know, oh, I'm a slave to this stuff. I'm a servant. I'm not doing it. It's not, I'm not free. I have to do this. I have to go out every weekend. Because if I don't, I'm going to go crazy. I'm scared not to. I have to go text her and do, do, do this or another. You know why? 
because I'm afraid to be alone. I'm afraid to just deal with myself. Just come over here and sit next to me, if nothing else, please. Right now, you're a slave to this stuff. You're a servant to it. Right. He's trying to tell you, listen, you're in bondage, man. We ain't in bondage. We free. Did he tell you? OK, what I'm telling you is whoever committed sin is a servant to sin. Right. Now they got now, you know, because he got a sharp, slick mouth. So he say that to him. Now they looking like, well, you know what I'm saying? Watch this. And the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. Mm -hmm. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. Right? He said, I speak that which I have seen with my father. You do that which you have seen with your father. Now watch what they say now. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahshua said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Right? They said, listen, they said, Abraham is our father. Because what they're looking at is, we're descendants of Abraham. We he, Israelites. So we descendants of Abraham. So they coming back at him, and they looking like, man, look, Abraham is our father. We already told you that. And then he got at him. Y'all sure is getting at them right now. I want y'all to know that. He's telling them, nah, if y'all was Abraham, father, y'all would do the works of Abraham. So he taking shots at them. So what you think they going to do? Just take the shots and be like, all right, you right? No, they about to shoot back. Watch this. But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one. Right? Even God. So Yahushua took a shot at them and they said, he said, he said, man, Abraham ain't your father. If he is your father, you would do the works of, the works of uh, Abraham. Then they came back and they were looking like, man, at least we ain't born of fornication. Right? Because the story... The, the rumor around Yahushua was like, man, your mama was pregnant with you before she got married. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> your mama. Mm, I ain't going to say nothing about your mama. Your mama was. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? So that was the word on them. And for our culture at that time, that wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't like a common. Right now, that's commonplace. That wasn't commonplace back then. So they was looking at it like, oh, that's cold blooded. So now, Yahushua shot at them like, nah, man, y'all ain't, ain't Abraham's kids. If y'all was Abraham's kids, you'd do what Abraham did. They shot back at him like, man, your mama a thot. You know what I'm saying? Pretty much what they're saying. Then they're looking like, they're, they're looking like, oh, okay, so now watch how Yahushua shot you back. Watch this. Yahushua said unto them, if God was your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil. And the Lord right? So now he's shooting back at them. He looks like, nah, Abraham made your father, and Yah is my father, but you, your father, is the devil. Now he's shooting back at them. Your father is the devil. Watch this. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinced, convinced me of sin? Convinced me of sin. And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. <clears throat> right? So now he's letting them know. Ain't none of y'all God. Y'all father is the devil. Y'all can't hear what I'm saying because your father is the devil. He getting at them, right? Now watch this. Notice he said he was a liar from the beginning and he never abode of the truth. So that That's right. That debunks the myth. Yeah, a lot of these people try to teach you that. Well, don't you know that Lucifer is Satan and, and Lucifer were, was God's greatest angel. He was like God's right hand man. These <laughs> people were coming up with some crazy stuff. He was God's right hand man. But then he got filled with too much pride. To the fact that he wanted to be God. <laughs> so God cast him out of heaven. Like, man, ain't none of that stuff happened. What are you talking about? The book already told you he was a liar from the beginning. At what point was he God's right hand man? He tricked God? He was lying to God from the beginning and God didn't know about it? Like, no. You know what I'm saying? That stuff is made up. He's a liar from the beginning. Y'all created him as a liar.
right? He created he created the crooked serpent. You can read about that in Job, right? It was a crooked serpent that he created, and that serpent was a serpent that that beguiled Eve, and and which led Adam to eating the uh, the fruit of uh, uh, from the knowledge of, uh, from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You know what I'm saying? All this other stuff they do is myth. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of myths, a bunch of fairy tales these people be making up and putting it on our God. Watch this. Keep going. The truth is better. You know what I'm saying? Like when you know the truth, when you look, when when people sit here and hear me teach the word like truthfully, they walk away like, why would they even lie about this? You know what I'm saying? What was the point of lying? This thing is way more entertaining and way more fun and makes way more sense when you just tell the truth. But the, the honest of it is, some of these people aren't lying because they're trying to deceive you. Some of these people open up this book and just don't understand what they read. Some of these people just pick up the book and the Most High God didn't open their eyes to it. So what they decide to do is just make it up. They just like, well, I don't really get it, but uh, I feel like it say something like this. And they start teaching it. And then they make a mess of it. And so then that stuff spreads and spreads and spreads. A lot of these people don't even mean to be lying. They just don't know and they're scared to admit that they don't know. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. Watch this. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that you are a Samaritan and has a devil? Yahushua. Right? So look, now they're getting back at him. So they look at it like, you know what I'm saying? Yahushua told them, Nah, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't Abraham's kids because y'all would do the works of Abraham. They came back and told him, You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. You were born to fornication, boy. You know what I'm saying? And he came back then, but nah, your father is the devil. You know what I'm saying? Then they come back to him. They're like, what? Boy, you a Samaritan, you know what I'm saying, which is a Gentile. Say so like, don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't we say well that you got a devil and, and that you a Samaritan? Watch what he say. Yahshua answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father and ye do dishonor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that you has a devil. Abraham right said, now they say now we know for sure you got a devil now because he just said if anybody keeps the words that i say you will never die now when we hear that it don't mean nothing to us right when we hear that be like yeah jesus christ thank you jesus say that jesus right but you got to put yourself in the position of somebody who ain't never heard no foolishness like this before they've never seen nobody walk up to them with confidence, just a regular looking guy doing miracles all the time, just walk up to him like, nah, you do what I say, you ain't never going to die. Just cocky, just saying it like it's, like it's regular. Like this is what I say every day. They're looking at this guy like, you're a freaking bozo. What's wrong with you? Like you can't, you don't get to, like who is this guy? Why he get to say this? They don't like it because they're looking at it like, you can't be telling the truth. Because <laughs> if you were telling the truth, you would be over there with the Pharisees. So now they kind of aggravated and he getting at him. He's like, nah, man, y'all ain't Abraham kids. So now he pooping on them. He making them feel like, you know what I'm saying? They looking like, man, hold on. We the men around here, though. Like before you came around, we was the one getting all the attention. Then he started getting, in the, getting the attention. And now they trying to test him. And then he always got something to say. He's slick and quick with the mouth. You know what I'm saying? So now they going back and forth with him. They sling and they, they insults back and forth. But Yahushua on point with his insults. They just kind of throwing stuff at the wall. You know what I'm saying? And now they looking like, man, we know for sure you got a devil. You know what I'm saying? And you a Samaritan, Gentile boy. You know what I'm saying? You know ain't no Hebrew going to like getting called a Gentile. So Yahushua, look what he say. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that the eyes of the devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets. And you say, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who maketh, so, who maketh thou thyself? Right? So now, they looking at him, they looking like, okay, hold on. You trying to say, just because a person listens to you, they don't have to die. But let's just be logical here. What's your name again? Yahushua? Let's just be logical, Yahushua. Abraham is dead. Are you trying to say you're greater than Abraham? You know what I'm saying? Like, Abraham is the man. That's God's friend. Are you trying to tell me that you're greater than Abraham? You sound crazy. Who are you making yourself? That's what they ask them. Like, why you keep trying to make yourself out to be something more than what you are? Okay, maybe you a prophet. 
Maybe you be doing the miracles. Like, okay, for sure, you can have that. But now you trying to make it seem like you greater than Abraham, buddy? Like, no, nah, I'm not feeling that, right? But watch what Yahushua say. Yahushua answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. He yeah. said, look, if it's just me saying it, it don't mean nothing. Look how cocky you. If it's just me saying it, it don't mean nothing. But watch this. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say he is your God. Ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. But I know him <laughs> and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He, he said, said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Listen to how this sounds. Abraham was alive thousands of years ago, right? They never met Abraham. He's thousands of years older, dead, right? And he said, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Watch this. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old and hast seen Abraham. Yahshua said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. He said, verily, verily. Before I, I he said, uh, verily, verily, I say unto you. So in other words, for real, for real, let me tell you something. Before Abraham was, I am. What do you think he's saying there? I'm God. How do you people read this stuff and they be looking like, no, nah, y'all, you ain't God. You got to pick a side. You got to say one or two things. You got to say, man, the gospel stuff is fake. I'm not reading that stuff because... It ain't no way that that a man can be God, right? That's one one take you can have. You can be like, man, I don't trust the Bible because that don't make sense to me, right? I respect that. If you if you look at it and you read it, and you be like, I'm not rocking with Yahushua being God. I see that's what he's trying to say though, but I'm not rocking with it. I'm with these Jews, right? I'm with the I'm with the Hebrews right here that's looking at him, looking like, man, you crazy, you got a devil. If you pick their side. I'm with that. I can respect that. But what I don't respect is when somebody look at this and they pretend, no, nah, he ain't trying to say he God. He trying to say something else. The man just told you. I am. Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Abraham, you've never met. You, you ain't even 50 years old, boy. How you going to say you met Abraham? <coughs> right? And then he responded. He said, see, before Abraham was, right? Forget meeting Abraham. Before Abraham even existed, I am. That's what I was God. there. I existed. That's you know what y'all? You know what y'all said to uh Moses. to uh, to Moses? I am. He said, "Listen, tell the people I am sent you." So when you look at it, he's telling you, "I am Yahuwah. I am God. I am boy." So what you think, D boy? When they when you see somebody in your face and they telling you they God, what's your next step if you're a Hebrew and you keep the law? Give me a darn stone. Where, where my stone? Watch this. Read this. Then they took up stones to cast at him. But Yahshua hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. You ain't never seen nobody pick up a rock so darn fast. After he starts saying, before Abraham was. I am. That boy said, you said you. But you started casting them things to that boy. Yeah, yeah, throwing her. Yo, she was slipping them things. She was like the Matrix, boy. That boy slipped around the corner and then disappeared on him. They looked like, where'd he go? They chased him around. They couldn't find him because it wasn't his time yet. Most of guy had to protect him. He knew he went too far because as he said, I am. Them boys looking like, nah, you went too far, buddy. Yeah, yeah, just start throwing rocks at that boy. That boy had to... You know what I'm saying? Y'all sure got out of Dodge. But that's what happened. They not throwing stones at him because he said, you know what I'm saying? He said something cool. Why else are they throwing stones at him? I don't know how you read this stuff and come away with, no, nah, he never said he was God. No, it was, uh, I think uh, in another place, I think it's in Matthew, when he asked him, he was like, yo, I did a lot of works. Which one you going to stone me for? And it was like, we not stoning you because of the miracles. We stoning you because you making yourself equal with God. Yeah, I think, yeah, we're going to get to that one too. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it is. They stone him. They, they, they mad at him because they believe that he's saying he's God. And he is. Right? So now you got to pick a side with that. You got to say, nah, I'm on their side. I agree with them. Y'all sure wilding out. Or you got to say, 
Mm. He is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Ain't none of my business. You know what I'm saying? The man got the words of life. I got to roll with it. I'm rolling with it. That's the side I'm picking. But the rest of y'all, a lot of y'all in the middle. You know what I'm saying? You know, well, no. I mean, I believe everything the Bible say. Okay, for sure. But I don't, I don't, I don't think he said. When I read it, I don't see that he said he was God. Okay. You don't believe everything. You know what I'm saying? You don't believe. I see. I know what type of believer you is. You just be picking and choosing, doing whatever you want to do. All right, for sure. I ain't got time to have no conversation with nobody like that. Right? Keep going. What else we got? That was the end of the chapter. Well, let's uh, let's see how much time we got. We still got a little time. Let's go to uh, chapter nine. All right, it's John chapter nine. Give me verse one. Watch the book say. This one good too. And Yahshua passed by, he saw a man which had which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Yahshua answered, Neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Right? So now they look at a man, and they see that he was born the way he was. He was born with his disabilities, right? And so when they looked at him, they asked the question to y'all. Sure, it's like, well, while we got you here, we won't help understand in these types of situations. So this particular guy, why is he like this? Is it because his parents sinned or is it because he sinned? Because they asked him the question because they, they looking at it like he was born that way. So like how in the world could he have sinned to cause his own, you know what I'm saying, his own disabilities, right? So then they looking at it like, well, it must be the parents then. But then is that fair that if the parents sin, it get passed down to the kid in this way? Right. So they asking the question to try to get that understanding. Like, OK, is he disabled because his parents sin or is it something that he did that caused that? Help us understand it. Y'all sure messed them all the way up. Y'all sure was like, no, nah, I wasn't his parents. Neither was it him. This is like this so that y'all y'all can show the power of the most high God. Yahushua can show the power of the most high God. Right? So now watch what happened. <clears throat> I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpreted sin. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Yahushua made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go in the pool of Siloam and wash. And right. So look, they looking at him. They look like, what? ain't this the blind guy? Because y'all sure healed his eyes so he could see now. But they looking like, man, it's the same dude we be seeing all the time. Ain't that the blind guy? Right. And then they looking at it. They looking like, nah, that ain't him. It's just somebody that do look like him, though. But that ain't him. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody else. He just look like him. Then the dude, Papa, he looking like, nah, it's me. I'm telling you, I can see now. They looking like, sure. You can see? Yeah, I can see. How you able to see? Man, it's a dude called Yahushua. Kid, you not. Reach down, put some clay on my eyes, anointed them, and all of a sudden, I can see. Right? So then people hearing that, they looking like, Yahushua, that's the dude that uh, so-and-so was telling us about. The one that they think is the Messiah. He healed you for real? Oh, so he the real deal? Because, you know, it ain't no Instagram. It ain't, it ain't like you could just forward the video to somebody and they be like, dang, he the real deal. It's just word of mouth. So if you catch him, you catch him. If you don't catch him, then you don't catch him. So everybody trying to catch him because everybody talking about him. You got people coming back to your town like, man, look, man, I just saw the craziest thing. No, buddy just walked on water right in front. Of no, I saw him. I was on the shore. I'm looking. And at first I thought it was a ghost out there. But then I'm like, wait a minute. And then he called his homeboy to come out with him. It was crazy, bro. Right. But you only one person seeing that in your whole town. What do you think the town going to do after that? Bro, I'm taking tomorrow off work. I'm about to see y'all, sure. He walked on water in front of you. I'm about to see that. Then they go out and they go look for him. And then when they walking around, what they see? He healed somebody. They, they blind. So they walk around, they looking like, oh, that's crazy. 
I know he was blind. I'll be seeing him every day and now he can see. And the man looking at me, telling me he can see. He couldn't look at me and tell me that before. He used to be, when he talked to me, he used to be staring out in the middle of the air like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, nah, would you mind grabbing me some water? Now the man looking at me dead in my darn eyes with his blind butt. Right? Now they looking at it like this is different. So it moves people. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Then they said unto he, then they said unto him, where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind, and it was in the Sabbath day when Yahshua made the clay and opened his eyes. And again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto him, you put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, right? So they finding dirt on they looking like, see, he can't be of God because he don't keep the Sabbath day. He heals somebody of blindness on the Sabbath. That's a sin. These people are darn crazy, but they get they become hell bent on judging outside of what the law say. Right. It's the same thing. Yeah. But that Yahushua it's the opposite of what Yahushua did when they tried to bring her to woman. Right. Instead of deferring to what to making somebody guilty when it's unclear, Yahushua deferred to mercy. Right. And so then what they looking at is he put clay on somebody's eyes. There's nothing in our law that would say putting clay on somebody's eyes on the Sabbath is a sin. Right? That's not labor. That's nothing like that. Right? But because it's unclear for them or they think they can make a case, they defer to making him guilty. And that's the error. Right? The Most High God loves mercy. Again, mercy can't supersede what the law say. But when there is wiggle room, that's when you defer to mercy. If it's like, eh, it could go this way, go this way, then you should defer to mercy. That's what the most high God like. Right? Keep going. Watch this. <clears throat> Therefore, the Pharisees said, this man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man again, what sayest thou of him that he has opened thine eyes? He said, he is a prophet, but the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they they were like, boy, you him. wasn't really blind. Why are you lying to these people, making them believe? You know what I'm saying? They thought he was Benny Hanna. What's his name? What's the guy named that be uh the, the famous pastor that be, uh you know what I'm saying, the one that be slapping people with the thing and they start walking and stuff. But it's all fact. What's his name? Who? No, nah, neither one of them. It's a, it's a dude. He looked like he might be like Indian or something. What's his name? It's like yeah. Benny Hinn or Benny. I want to say Benny Hanna, but it's not. That's racist. It's Ben something. Benny something. You know what I'm saying? But he old school. You know what I'm saying? But he used to be famous. You know what I'm saying? And he had slapped him. My mama down there. Ask her who it is. She know who I'm talking about. Peter Popoff. Is he, huh? Sharon said Peter Popoff. No, not him. No, not, not him. No, <laughs> not him. But yeah, like him though. But he like he like a he like a white half white in, half Indian version. You know what I'm saying? But he had people standing up out of their wheelchair and there. But it's all phony. It's all of it phony. So they looking at it like they looking like you know what, man? You probably paid this dude to walk around talking about he healed you of the blind. You wasn't blind to begin with. You gotta stop lying to these people. Where are your parents at if you were born blind? So then his parents came. His parents looking like nah, for real. No, for real. Like he was he was blind. No, nah, they came out the womb. You know what I'm saying? Eyes going cross eyed, all types of stuff when he came out. We looked at him like, oh, it might be something wrong with him. And then when he got three, he still wasn't, you know what I mean, focusing on nothing. You know what I'm saying? And then he turned five. And I was like, yeah, look over there. And he was like, huh? What does that mean? You know what I'm saying? That's when we knew mm -mm, he can't see. Right? So then they looking at him. They look, they trying to explain like he really can't see. This is legit. So then the Pharisees in there, watch what they say. Is this is your son whom you say was born blind? How then do we now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was the Messiah, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. 
one thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. <laughs> right? So listen, the blind man is looking like, man, y'all keep calling me over here trying to get me to say something. Let me tell you something. I don't know if y'all sure a sinner or not. That's none of my business. Let me tell you what I do know. I couldn't see my whole life. And now I can. That's it. They look like, like y'all making it deep. He didn't look like I could see. I couldn't see before. And now I can see. So if y'all think he a sinner for that, that's y'all business. Go handle it. Deal with it. But uh, I'm about to go look at some stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'll see y'all later. Watch this. Then said they unto him again. What did he do to thee? How opened he thine eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spake to Moses. As for this fellow, we know not from where he is, from whence he is. Then the man answered and said unto them, Why, hearing is a marvelous thing, that ye know not from whence he is, and yet he's opened my eyes. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he heareth. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of God, he could do nothing. They answered and said unto him, You was altogether born in sins, and you do teach us? They yeah, they look like, they look like, boy, you a sinner. You were born blind. You must have been a sinner. And you got the nerve to come here and preach to us. Talking to us about who got here and who pray and all that. Boy, get out of our darn faith. They didn't like that. Because the man started preaching, speaking sense to him. They looking like, man, we Moses' disciple. We don't know nothing about this, y'all sure. We don't even know if God really talking to him. We don't even know where he's from. The blind man was looking like, now that's interesting. Because y'all say y'all don't know where he's from, yet he opened my eyes and now I can see. He is like, now listen, we know that anything that come from God going to come from somebody who served God and God only hear those who serve him, right? And this man opened my darn eyes. How could he do these things if he's not from God? So the Pharisee took offense to it because it's like, oh, you teaching us now, huh? You sinner, get your butt out of my darn face. Keep going, watch this. Yahshua heard that they cast him out. And when he had found him, he said unto him, dost thou believe on the son of God? And he answered and said, who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? Yahshua said unto him, you have both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Yahshua said, for judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see that they would see might be made blind. Some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Right, so the Pharisees, because y'all sure always taking shots at the Pharisees, right? He always taking little subliminals and little shots, and they not so subliminal, right? So he always taking shots at them. So he talking, y'all sure talking to the blind man, he bumped into him again. He was like, yeah, do you believe? You know what I'm saying? You believe on me? You know what I'm saying? You believe on the son of man? And then the, the, the you know what I'm saying, the blind man, he is looking like, or the man that used to be blind, he looking like, man, listen, man, who, who, who is it that I need to believe on? I can see now. So who, who is it? You tell me. Are you seeing him and you talking to him right now? That's what Yahushua sure says. You seen him and you talking to him right now. And blind man was like, listen, man, you the one. Start worshiping him. Right? And he was like, all right, don't trip. I came into this world for judgment so that when people see, I'm going to make it so that they don't see. And the ones that's blind, I'm going to make it so that they see. He's speaking spiritually at that point. Right. The people who think they understand the word and think that they know what it takes to to reach the kingdom. He going to make them look dumb. Right. He going to make it look like they don't know what they talking about. And the ones who don't know what they talking about, he going to teach them so that they do know what they talking about. Right. He going to flip the script. So the Pharisees heard it because they with him and they looking like, OK, there you go. Take another shot at us. You know what I'm saying? Cause we the ones that actually know the word. And he always trying to poop on us, make us look stupid. So they asked him a question. Oh, so we blind now, y'all sure? That's what you saying? Y'all sure? You saying we blind now? Huh? That's what it is? So y'all sure come back to him. Watch this. Y'all sure said unto them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you Right? He's like, no, 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 no. Look out. Just, just understand how sharp and smart y'all sure. He just got this smart darn mouth. They asked him, oh, so we blind now, y'all sure? That's what you're trying to say? I hear you taking your shot over there. You know what I'm saying? You just can't help yourself. All you got to take shots at us. So we blind now. Y'all sure was like, oh, no, if y'all were blind, you wouldn't have no sin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't be sinning if you were blind. But watch this. If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remain. He said, because y'all think y'all see, your sin remain. <laughs> In other words, he's telling them, 
if you admitted that you didn't know what you was talking about, if you admitted that you was lost, if you if you admitted that, you know what, you got some questions, you might be all right. But now, since you say you know it all and that you see clearly and you good, your sin remain. All right? What, what verse is that? Well, it always stick with me. That's the end of the chapter. That's the end? All right, we can stop there. We'll, we'll pick it up next week. Uh, I think we're still going in, John. I think we had verse 10 after that. I mean, chapter 10 after that. Um, I don't think we're going to switch around yet. Um, any questions? Is Benny Hinn? Yeah. Yeah, Benny Hinn. Boy, that boy, Benny Hinn. He is. He is oh, yeah, you know he. You know what I'm saying? You know, that might be. That might be the son of darn predict. He's still alive? I was about to say, he might be the son of darn perdition. No, no, You know they say it's one beast that, that was and was not and is, you know what I'm saying, it's to come and all that. Maybe it's him. You never know. Maybe he still is to come. That boy used to, you know, go look up Benny Hinn. Go look it up. Just Google it. Just see, that boy used to bow. Them people be sitting there and they be rolling around. They will. Oh, no. Look Benny Hinn up for show. Sure. There is another video that I saw recently. Oh, I think I'm a lie. It's a Christian pastor, but it looked like he, you know what I'm saying, maybe just start being a pastor in the last couple because he's a little awkward, you know what I'm saying? And how, how he, like anybody normally look at him, but the way I look at him, look, I can tell, like, mm, you ain't been doing this long, right? So, like, he's standing there, right? Or, or he ain't even on the camera. They just got a woman in on camera and she in the front row and she clapping. And you could tell he's doing his, his little miracle stage thing, right? He got a towel. And you can see this towel come flying off of the edge of the camera shot and it fly into the woman. But I don't know if it's like a weighted towel or a weighted cover or something. Knock the woman clean off her feet. <laughs> Bow! She hit the floor. Bow! And then she's sitting there. Everybody in the, in the, in the church is <gasps> oh, and they looking around. But he walk up and you can tell he don't know what to do because he looking like well, this is supposed to be a miracle so I can't look like it's an accident because I look like an idiot. So he kind of like, like nervously, you know what I'm saying? Keep trying to act like, you know what I'm saying? Nothing. Everybody else helping the woman off of the ground. And he just kind of hovering around her like, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Trying to keep talking like everything got right. And then she get up and then he just start petting her. You know what I'm saying? Like a little dog. Because he don't know what to do. Y'all got to watch it. That one is hilarious. I'm looking like, oh, poor man. You know what I'm saying? You trying to, you probably learned that from your Christian pastor. You know what I'm saying? Yo, 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 pastor father. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know what I'm saying? You messed it up. You know, you ain't supposed to get the weighted towel and throw it at her darn head, boy. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to toss something soft. You know what I'm saying? Let her fall out on her own. You know what I'm saying? That's how the game go. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what these people do. Let me see. It was some questions. Did I miss any of them? Let me see. It's all types of stuff. I might have missed something. Uh, nowhere. Hi, Walter. Come and sit down and hear the words. <laughs> Who is Walter? Oh, Walter, somebody in the chat. Um, yeah, Brother Phil, remember that barbecue place we went to? They had huge beef ribs. Yeah, that's true. They did have some good beef ribs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 What about seeing nakedness? Or is that only if it's the mo mother and father? Or no, if it wasn't lustful? I don't remember what that was about. Then that nakedness thing wouldn't apply. The fornication. Uh, when uncovering someone naked, that's usually talking about close relatives. However, if a man uncover a woman's nakedness as a sin too, which would be adultery. Thank you. Oh, make it that plain. Lie from the beginning. The way you're telling the story is hilarious. I can just see people hanging out on the corner by a meter box clowning. And I don't feel like I should be laughing. <laughs> uh, this show does not come taught us, uh, nope, not at all. Meter box, that's funny. Um, not at all, Ms. Pam. Amos had me legit nervous, scared this morning. And I started a story this morning. Yeah, for sure. Um, I know where I said some more I read, no more about film medicine with theatrics. Why you got to put theatrics in all capital? Uh, let me see. Careful, everything. He was born to be an example so people can see and believe. I appreciate y'all. Don't even stop me. Okay. No questions then. All right. Well, let's pray out.